In the words of Aristide Zolberg, the most visible feature of independent Africa might well be instability, not stability, cleavage and conflict rather than unity and consensus. This assertion will be proven correct when political governors in Africa, especially under authoritarian regimes, became racketeering ventures where political leaders assume and maintain power to benefit themselves and their collaborators with less concern for the ordinary people. In order to consolidate power, many African detectors have committed numerous atrocities including the embezzlement of government funds, electoral fraud, extrajudicial killings, and crimes against humanity. One of the greatest illustrations of African detectors is Joseph Desiree Mobutu of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, later renamed Zaye. In this edition of Hispul Media, we explain how Mobutu Sese Seko conquered the Democratic Republic of the Congo and renamed it Zaye, but finally died in exile in 1997. Welcome to Hispul Media In Depth History. A brutal dictator, Mobutu Sese Seko was the president of Zaye from 1965 to 1997. The country was known as Democratic Republic of Congo until 1971 before he changed the name to Zaire. From 1967 to 1968, he was also the chairman of the Organization of African Unity. During the Congo crisis, Mobutu deposed the democratically elected government of left-wing nationalist Patrice Lumumba in 1960 with the support of Belgium and the United States. Mobutu established a government that arranged Lumumba's execution in 1961 and he led the country's armed forces until he took power himself in the second coup in 1965. Joseph Desiree Mobutu was born on the 14th of October 1930 in Lisala. He was a member of the Ngbandi ethnic group of then Belgian Congo. Mobutu, who was raised by an uncle and grandfather, was taught how to speak, read and write in French language, the official language of the country in the colonial period by the wife of the Belgian George. Mobutu belonged to a group of African subjects referred to as évolués. An évolué spoke French, followed European rather than customary laws, usually held white-collar jobs, although rarely higher than clerk, and lived primarily in the urban areas of the colony but were never a threat to the colonial administration. His journey to become a well-grounded évolué began in the capital, Leopoldville, now Kinshasa. His mother actually sent him to an uncle in Kokit Havil, present-day Mbandaka, where he attended the Christian Brothers School, a Catholic mission boarding school. He dominated school sports and also excelled in academic subjects and ran the class newspaper. In 1949, Mobutu stole away aboard a boat, traveling down river to Leopoldville where he met a girl. He was found several weeks later. As punishment for bad behavior, he was ordered to serve seven years in the colonial army, the force public. This singular art would come to define his life and career. While in the army, Mobutu found discipline and a father figure in Sergeant Louis Bobozo. While on sentry duty and whenever he had some free time, Mobutu continued his studies by reading European newspapers that he borrowed from Belgian officers and books that he could find anywhere. The writings of French President Charles de Gaulle, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Italian Renaissance philosopher Nicole Machiavelli were among his favorites. After passing an accounting course, Mobutu began to take interest in professional journalism. In 1956, he quit the army and became a full-time journalist, writing for the Leopoldville Daily, El Avenia. Two years later, he went to Belgium to cover the 1958 World Exposition and stayed to receive training in journalism. By this time, Mobutu had met many of the young Congolese intellectuals who were challenging colonial rule. He became friendly with Patrice Lumumba, joined his Congolese national movement MNC and eventually became Lumumba's personal aide. 
Several contemporary writings indicate that Belgian intelligence has recruited Mobutu to be an informer to the government. Following the general election in 1960, Lumumba was tasked with creating a government. He gave Mobutu the office of Secretary of State to the presidency. Mobutu held much influence in the final determination of the rest of the government. On the 5th of July 1960, soldiers of the Force Public stationed at Camp Leopold II in Leopoldville mutinied. They were dissatisfied with their all-white leadership and working conditions. In the following days, the revolt spread across the region. On the 8th of July, the full council of ministers convened in an extraordinary session under the chairmanship of President Joseph Kasavubu at Camp Leopold II to address the tax of Africanizing the garrison. Mobutu had shown some influence over the mutinying troops, but Kasavubu and the Bakongo ministers feared that he would enact a coup d'etat if he were given the power. Lumumba then saw Mpolo as courageous but favored Mobutu's prudence. As the discussions continued, the cabinet began to divide on the lines of their preferred choice for the position of chief of staff. Lumumba wanted to keep both men in his government to avoid upsetting their camp of supporters. In the end, Mobutu was given the role and awarded the rank of a colonel. The following day, government delegation left the capital to oversee the Africanization of the army and Mobutu was sent to Equator, a province in the northwest of the Belgian Congo. Encouraged by a Belgian government intent on maintaining its access to rich Congolese mars, secessionist violence erupted in the south. As it became clear that the United Nations forces sent to help restore order was not helping to crush the secessionists, Lumumba turned to the Soviet Union for assistance. This was a cardinal sin in the era of the Cold War. He received massive military aid and about a thousand Soviet technical advisors within six weeks. As this was during the Cold War, the US government feared that the Soviet activity was a maneuver to spread communist influence in Central Africa. Kasavubu was encouraged by the US and Belgium to dismiss Lumumba, which he did on the 5th of September. An outraged Lumumba declared Kasavubu deposed, but parliament refused to recognize the dismissals and urged them to reconcile. Unfortunately, no agreement was reached. Lumumba and Kasavubu each ordered Mobutu to arrest the other. As army chief of staff, Mobutu came under intense pressure from multiple sources, including embassies of Western nations, which helped to pay their salaries, Kasavubu and his own subordinates. Their ultimate goal was to get rid of the Soviet presence in the country. On the 14th of September, Mobutu launched a bloodless coup and declared both Kasavubu and Lumumba neutralized. He established a new government of university graduates and a college of commissioner generals. Lumumba rejected this action but was forced to retire to his residence where United Nations peacekeepers prevented Mobutu's soldiers from arresting him. After losing confidence that the international community would support his reinstatement, Lumumba fled in late November to join his supporters in Stanleyville to establish a new government. He was captured by Mobutu's forces in early December and detained at his headquarters in Taysville. However, Mobutu still considered him a threat and transferred him to the rebelling state of Katanga on the 17th of January. 1961. Lumumba disappeared from public view thereafter. It will be discovered later that he was executed the same day by secessionist forces of Moes Shombe after Mobutu's government handed him over. In a political move aimed at strengthening the army and his own support, Kasavubu promoted Mobutu to Major General on the 23rd of January 1961. In 1964, Pierre Mulele led partisans in another rebellion that quickly occupied two-thirds of the Congo. However, the army, led by Mobutu, responded swiftly. They reconquered the entire territory through 1965. In the March 1965 elections, 
Prime Minister Moise Chombe's Congolese National Convention had won a large majority. But Kasavubu appointed an anti Shombe leader, Evaris Kimba, as Prime Minister designate. However, Parliament refused to confirm him twice. With the government almost paralyzed, Mobutu seized power in a bloodless coup on November 24, 1965. He had just turned 35 a month earlier. Under the auspices of a state of exception, Mobutu assumed sweeping powers for five years. In his speech upon taking power, Mobutu told a large crowd at the main stadium in Leopoldville that it would take him at least five years to right the wrongs caused by the five-year-long activities of politicians, and therefore, there will be no more political activities for five years. On the 30th of November 1965, Parliament approved a measure which turned over most legislative powers to Lumumba and his cabinet, although it retained the right to review his decrees. In early March 1966, he declared to Parliament that he was revoking their right of review, and two weeks later, his government permanently suspended the body and assumed its functions. Mobutu's government initially presented itself as apolitical, if not anti-political. The term politician had negative connotation and had almost become synonymous with someone who was evil or corrupt. The Corps of Volunteers of the Republic was founded in 1966 as a vanguard movement to rally popular support behind Mobutu. He was named the nation's second national hero after Lumumba. Despite his role in Lumumba's death, Mobutu worked to position himself as an heir to Lumumba's legacy. Early in his rule, authentic Congolese nationalism was one of his key tenets. The Popular Movement of the Revolution MPRO, was founded in 1967 and remained the country's only lawful political party until 1990. Nationalism, revolution, and authenticity were among the themes advanced by the MPRO in its doctrine, the Manifesto of Insele. Revolution was described as a truly national revolution, essentially pragmatic, which called for the repudiation of both capitalism and communism. One of the MPRO's slogans was neither left nor right, to which no center was later added. The same year, all trade unions were merged into a single organization, the National Union of Zaharian Workers, and placed under government control. Mobutu envisioned the union as a tool to support government policy rather than an independent entity. Faced with multiple issues early in his rule, Mobutu used patronage to convert most opposition into submission. Those he could not convert, however, he dealt with forcefully. Four cabinet members were arrested in 1966 on charges of complicity in an attempted coup. Tried by a military tribunal and publicly executed in front of over 50,000 people in an open-air spectacle. Former Katangan gendarmerie uprisings were crushed, as were the Stanleyville mutinies led by white mercenaries in 1967. By 1970, nearly all potential threat to his authority had been eliminated, and law and order had been restored to nearly all parts of the country. That year marked the pinnacle of Mobutu's legitimacy and power. In 1970, King Bedouin of Belgium made a highly successful state visit to Kinshasa. That same year, presidential elections in which Mobutu was the sole candidate and voting was not secret was held along with legislative elections. According to official figures, Mobutu was confirmed winner with nearly unanimous support, garnering over 10 million votes. Immediately he consolidated power. Mobutu set up several military units to protect him and his regime. The units included the Special Presidential Division, Civil Guards and Service for Action, and Military Intelligence. Mobutu embarked on a pro-African cultural awareness campaign called Authenticity in 1966. Starting on the 1st of June 1966, Leopoldville was renamed 
Kinshasa, Elizabethville became Lumumbashi, and Stanleyville became Kisangani. In October 1971, he renamed the country as the Republic of Zaire. He ordered the people to change their European names to African names and stop priests from baptizing people with European names or face five-year jail term. In 1972, in accordance with his earlier decree, Mobutu renamed himself Mobutu Sesiseko Nkuku Nkbendu Wazabanga, which means the all-powerful warrior who because of his endurance and inflexible will to win goes from conquest to conquest, leaving fire in his wake. Around this time, he abandoned his military uniform in favor of this iconic image and attire. In 1974, a new constitution consolidated Mobutu's grip on the country and defined the MPR as a single institution in the country. The document codified Mobutu's emergency powers which he had wielded since 1965 and bestowed on him plenitude of power exercise, effectively concentrating all governing power in his hands. Under this system, Mobutu was re-elected three times, each time by implausible large margins of 98% or more. Every five years, a single list of NPR candidates was returned to the legislature with equally implausible margins. Mobutu consolidated power early in his rule by publicly executing political rivals, secessionists, coup cool plotters, and other threats to his rule. To set an example, many were hanged in front of large crowds. Former Prime Minister Evaris Kimba, along with three cabinet members, Jerome Anani, Defense Minister, Emmanuel Bamba, Finance Minister, and Alessandri Mahamba, Minister of Mines and Energy, were tried in May 1966 and executed in front of 50,000 spectators. The men were executed on charges of conspiracy with Colonel Alfonso Bangala and Major Pierre Efomi to stage a coup. Mobutu explained the execution as follows. One had to strike through a spectacular example and create the conditions of regime discipline. When a chief takes a decision, he decides, period. In 1968, Lumumba's Minister of Education and a rebel leader during the 1964 Simba Rebellion, Pierre Mulele, was lured out of exile in Brazzaville on the assurance of amnesty. Instead, he was tortured and killed by Mobutu's forces. Mobutu later switched to a new tactic of buying off political rivals. He would use the slogan, keep your friends close but keep your enemies closer still, to describe his tactics of co-opting political opponents through bribery. Between November 1965 and April 1997, Mobutu shuffled his cabinet 60 times. The frequent cabinet reshuffles increased insecurity among his ministers and ultimately led to massive corruption. Another tactic was to arrest and sometimes torture dissident members of his government, only to later pardon them and reward them with high offices. Mobutu demanded absolute personal allegiance in exchange for the opportunity to amass wealth. As early as 1970, it was estimated that Mobutu had stolen 60% of the national budget that year, making him one of Africa and the world's most corrupt leaders. In 1972, Mobutu tried to name himself President for life, but the move was not successful. In June 1983, he raised himself to the rank of Field Marshal. Between 1973 and 1974, Mobutu launched his Zionization campaign, nationalizing foreign-owned businesses that were handed over to Zairians. Because of the collapse in copper prices due to the impact of the oil shock, Zaire went from prosperity to bankruptcy almost overnight in 1974. The economic collapse forced Zaire to turn towards the International Monetary Fund IMF to help it manage its debt which he could no longer be serviced. The businesses that he had initially handed over to Zairians were in turn placed under government control. 
At the same time, Mobutu imposed a 50% salary cut to state employees, which led to a failed coup attempt in 1975. By 1977, Mobutu's nationalizations had precipitated economic slump and forced him to try to woe foreign investors back. In the same year, Katangan rebels based in Angola invaded Zaire in retaliation for Mobutu's support for anti-MPLA rebels but was repelled by France's support. This attack was called the First Shaba. In 1978, the Second Shaba invasion took place but was equally repelled through Belgium, United States and French support. By 1980, Mobutu had reduced the size of the army from about 51,000 to 23,000 and 90% of the soldiers were from the Ngbandi ethnic group, as Mobutu did not trust other ethnic groups enough to serve in the army. Mobutu spent his time increasing his personal fortune. By 1984, he was said to have amassed an estimated 5 billion US dollars, of which about 3.4 billion was found when he was ousted. While the country's road deteriorated and the people starved, Mobutu owns a fleet of Mercedes-Benz that he used to travel across his numerous palaces. Mobutu's rule earned a reputation as one of the world's foremost examples of kleptocracy and nepotism. While in office, he formed a totalitarian regime responsible for numerous human rights violations attempted to purge the country of all Belgian cultural influences and maintained an anti-communist stance to gain positive international support. Mobutu was the subject of one of the most pervasive personality cults of the 20th century. He held such titles as Father of the Nation, Messiah, Guide of the Revolution, Helmsman, Founder, Savior of the People and Supreme Combatants. During the Mobutu years, relations between Zaire and Belgium wavered between close intimacy and open hostility. During King Bedouin's highly successful visit to Kinshasa in 1970, a treaty of friendship and cooperation between the two countries was signed. However, Mobutu tore up the treaty in 1974 in protest at Belgium's refusal to ban an anti-Mobutu book written by left-wing lawyer Jules Kome. Shortly after the Katangan secession was successfully crushed, Zaye, then called the Republic of the Congo, signed a treaty of technical and cultural cooperation with France. During the presidency of Charles de Gaulle, diplomatic relations between the two countries gradually grew stronger and closer due to their many shared geopolitical interests. Zaye was of great strategic interest to France. Mobutu's relationship with the Soviet Union was frosty and tense. A staunch anti-communist, he was not anxious to recognize the Soviets. The USSR had supported, though mostly in words, both Patrice Lumumba, Mobutu's democratically elected predecessor, and the Simba Rebellion. However, to project a non aligned image, he did renew ties in 1967. He would, however, condemn the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968. His relations with the People's Republic of China was no better than its relationship with the Soviet Union. However, in November 1972, Mobutu extended diplomatic recognition to China, as well as East Germany and North Korea. The following year, Mobutu paid a visit to Beijing, where he met with Chairman Mao Zedong and received promises of over $100 million in technical aid. Ostensibly, China and Zaire shared a common goal in Central Africa. For the most part, Zaire enjoyed warm relationship with the United States. The United States was the third largest donor of aid to Zaire after Belgium and France. And Mobutu was friends with several US presidents including Richard Nixon, Ronald Reagan, and George W. H. Bush. However, relations suffered significantly in 1974-75 over Mobutu's increasingly radical rhetoric 
and plummeted to an all-time low in the summer of 1975 when Mobutu accused the CIA of plotting his overthrow. In May 1990, due to the ending of the Cold War and a change in the international political climate as well as economic problems and domestic unrest, Mobutu agreed to give up the NPRO's monopoly on power. The students of the Lumumbashi campus of the National University of Zaire protested against Mobutu's regime, demanding his resignation. On the night of 11th of May 1990, electricity was cut off to the campus while a special military unit was sent in, leading to the death of at least 290 students. This marked the beginning of the end of Western support for Zaire. Following the 1991 riot in Kinshasa by unpaid soldiers, Mobutu brought opposition figures into a coalition government but still connived to retain control of the security services and important ministries. Factional divisions led to the creation of two governments in 1993, one pro and one anti-Mobutu. The anti-Mobutu government was headed by Laurent Mosenguo and Etienne Shekedi of the Union for Democratic and Social Progress UDPS. In 1994, the two groups merged into the High Council of Republic Parliament of Transition, headed by Kengo Wadendo as Prime Minister. During this period, Mobutu was becoming increasingly physically frail and during one of his trips to Europe for medical treatment, ethnic Tutsis captured much of Eastern Zaire. The seeds of Mobutu's eventual downfall were planted in the Rwandan genocide in 1994, when approximately 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus were massacred by roughly 200,000 Hutu extremists headed by the Rwandan government. When the Tutsi-dominated Rwandan Patriotic Front seized control of the entire country, hundreds of thousands of Hutus, including many of the genocidal killers, fled to refugee camps in eastern Zaire. Mobutu welcomed Hutu extremists as personal guests and allowed them to establish military and political bases in the eastern territories, from which they attacked and killed ethnic Tutsis across the border in Rwanda and in Zaire, ostensibly in preparation for a renewed offensive back into Rwanda. In response, the new Rwandan government began sending military aid to the Zairean Tutsis. The resulting conflict destabilized Eastern Zaire as a whole. In November 1996, Mobutu issued an order forcing Tutsis to leave Zaire. Rebels from Eastern Zaire, headed by President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda and Rwandan Minister of Defense Paul Kagame, launched an offensive to overthrow Mobutu. They were joined by local forces loyal to Laurent Desiree Kabila as they marched west towards Kinshasa. Burundi and Angola also supported the growing rebellion, which mushroomed into the First Congo War. Mobutu, who was ailing with cancer, was in Switzerland for treatment and could not coordinate any resistance. On the 16th of May 1997, following failed peace talks held in Pont Noir on board the South African Navy ship, with Kabila and President of South Africa Nelson Mandela, who chaired the talks, Mobutu fled into exile. Kabila's forces, known as the Alliance of Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Congo Zaye AFDL, proclaimed victory the next day. On the 23rd of May 1997, Zaye was renamed the Democratic Republic of the Congo. From 23rd May 1997, Mobutu lived in Rabat, Morocco, and died there on the 7th of September 1997 from prostate cancer at the age of 66. Click the video displayed here to know more of African presidents that were assassinated for refusing to bow to Western pressure. Don't forget to like this video. For more informative content like this, please subscribe to His Pearl Media, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.